the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's going to be a beautiful day that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Hello everybody. You know over the past 50 years I've been mighty blessed to have been able to turn a hobby into a profession. And in that time I've learned a lot about bass and their ever-changing behavior like how weather, water clarity and temperature, lure presentation, color, size, and lure models affect their mood. And I'm still having fun learning every time I go fishing. Okay, now let me tell you something I've learned that has really helped me. See those lures right there? It's a weightless 10 inch and the color is a green pumpkin candy. It's a squirming worm made by the good folks at Bass Pro Shop. And we've got it rigged with a Gamakatsu 5 volt hook. And we'll be dead sticking it, which is a highly productive shallow water technique I learned to fish a long time ago. There are a lot of ways to fish soft plastic, but one of my favorites is to fish them without any weight at all. But there are times when you need a little bit of weight. You can go to, say, a 132nd or maybe even a 116th, especially when bass are super inactive. What you want is a much more natural fall. And the more natural it looks, it's more enticing to the fish. And with that lighter weight or no weight at all, the bait doesn't get hung up or mired in the vegetation recover that's located in many bass locations. Instead of using a sinker, what you want, you allow the hook to be the weight to carry the worm to the bottom in a natural fashion. But there are times when there's a little bit of wind or you're fishing a little bit deeper, you need a little bit of weight. And when you need weight, go to the lightest weight you possibly can. Like I said, a 32nd or maybe even a 16th of an ounce. That's still an extremely light weight and doesn't really affect the movement or the action of that worm. Tell you what, let's go and get this thing wet and I'll tell you more about it as we fish along. Earlier, I mentioned the term dead sticking. You're probably saying, what? What is dead sticking? Well, I guess about the only way I can explain it. You cast it out, you let it sink to the bottom, and you let it sit for a while before moving it. And when you move it, you let it sit again for a while. Now, <laughs> it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But let me tell you, it really works big time it really works let me show you Full of it, didn't you? Open up. Cut that warm. There it is. Whoop. <laughs> nice one. It's toodaloo. Boy, that didn't get me wrapped up in something. I saw my line just starting to ease off. The wind was blowing me. I didn't know if it was a wind had me or fish hit me, but it doesn't cost anything to jerk. Bill Dance Outdoors, sponsored by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine. 
Go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is sponsored by Outdoor Water Solutions, offering pond and lake aeration systems with energy-saving solutions, including solar and wind, customized to fit your need. Visit OutdoorWaterSolutions.com for quality aeration products. Boy, it was just sitting there, just I mean, it wasn't moving when he hit it. Chunky little bass right there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I mean, it was just dead still. Just totally dead still when he hit it. Who you looking at? Me? Ta ta. Golly, boy, it's pretty. I threw it in the opening, never moved it. I mean, didn't budge it. And all of a sudden, I just saw the line. I didn't, I didn't even feel him hit it. Normally, you feel them. I tell you now, if you ain't got any patience, you better hang this technique up. I really don't know where this method of fishing was developed. Maybe somebody made a cast one day, then stopped to drink a swallow of water. Uh oh, look, hey, a bass is swimming off with my worm. Or it could have happened when a fisherman backlashed. You know, why? I don't know how, but I do know it works. And you really need to be a line watcher when you're fishing this technique. Whoa, buddy. I know I had that bait there at least 10 seconds before we picked it up. I didn't even move it. I threw it and came all the way out to it. And I know it took at least 10 seconds. It sat right there. And he picked it up and carried it at least five to six feet. He sure did. Look how dark and pretty that fish is. Nice. Really pretty. Ta ta. I threw at that tree. I made about a 30 foot cast. Had the trolling motor on low. And I know it sat there at least 10 seconds as I moved toward the tree. And all of a sudden, I saw the line just pick up and start out. And he moved five or six feet with it before I set the hook. You know, fishing this way makes me realize even more. When bass are active, I fish over many catchable ones simply because of one thing. I'm fishing too doggone fast. This tells me what I need to do. I see fish on my graph. And what it tells me is, Bill, you're doing something wrong. You need to slow down. Turn my boat around. I change to a slower presentation lure. I go right back over the same water and I catch fish. Would this have been a good time to try dead sticking? Well, maybe, maybe not. The bass that day weren't totally inactive. As for when it makes sense to dead stick, the answer is when fishing is slow, really slow and bass are very hard to come by. 
maybe when a pasture presentation doesn't work, or when fish are not in a chasing mood. A major pressure system has just occurred and the bass have been heavily pressured and don't seem to want anything. That's when dead sticking really shines. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reel, Quantum Performance Tuned, Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you by Ego Fishing and their all new S2 slider landing nets with the most advanced handle extension technology. Take the battle to the water with Ego. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, bite your fish, not your fish finder. Has he got it? Has he got it? Yeah, he's got it. Oh, got him. <laughs> he's a little rascal you. That's a good fish there. Oh, oh, get out of that stuff, boy. I got him out of the pants. Now he's back in them. Get back out of those pads, buddy. Come here. Ah, oh, come on back out of here. Come up here. I'm gonna tell you what, that hook is unbelievably sharp. There it is. Yes, you, there you are. Nice one. Healthy as it can be. Okay. Get back down in there. One thing you want to do, you want to keep that worm perfectly straight with your line. Because if you don't, it's going to twist your line. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier, when you try this technique of bassing, and I suggest you give it a try, the next time you're faced with one of those impossible days. It's going to require a great deal of patience and you're going to be making a lot fewer casts than you would normally. What you need to do is restrict your fishing to high percentage areas and places where you know bass live and where you've caught many fish before. And you should also see bass on your graft. Like I said, when you're struggling, this is a time for dead sticking and practicing lots of patience. Bass fishing is quite remarkable. Now many anglers believe in attracting a nice sized bass is action, sound, smell, which a lure must have, which isn't necessarily so. Well, first of all, smell and sound are important in some situations, but not nearly as important as sight. Bass may hear and smell an offering, but he needs to see it to eat it. And action is the key. And sometimes no action at all can be the key, like you're seeing today. However, I honestly believe lures that make no noise that can be worked slowly, like this, are much more effective on big bass. 
When fishing lures during these tough times and conditions, I think it's smart to curtail all noises that are abnormal to bass. Surprisingly, this may include many of those lures that shake, rattle, and roll. Sure, an active bass will strike a noisy lure intentionally simply because of its protective instinct or reflex action. Now, the waiting game is going to drive you crazy. Sometimes I've let the worm sit as long as 30 seconds before a bass will pick it up. The saving grace, I knew the bass were in the area. Now, it's tougher when you're not sure they're there. But when you know they're there, well, it's a lot easier to let it sit for a longer period of time. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Bill Dance Exclusive Rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light saltwater, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Bill, how much time do you spend on buying a new lure? Well, I really think a lot of expensive baits are overrated. A bass strikes whatever's available that appears to them to be forged, whether it costs $4 or $18. Like I've said before, we spend way too much time thinking about buying baits than bass do worrying about striking them. Bass are predators, not bankers. They'll never be concerned with the cost of a lure. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley, catch more fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. Anglers looking for a way to make their smaller boats stay put in shallow water? Check out the PowerPole Heavy Duty Spike. The spike helps hold small boats exactly where you want to keep them. It also secures the bow of a bass boat that has power poles. Each spike comes with a nylon dock line and push grips to help you easily sink it into sand or mud. Need to stay steady in one spot? Spike that spot. You can fish there as long as you wish. Come be part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Tuffy boy. A strong little red fish right there. You through yet? That's a pretty little fish right there. Yes, you are. Ready to go home? Okay, toodaloo. This is 30 pound braid. I think I mentioned that earlier. It's made by Berkeley, it's an X9. They call it X9. It's Nine interwoven braids, and it's strong. I mean, it's extremely strong. Small diameter. I'll give you an example of how small it is. It's equivalent to about an eight pound mono diameter. Like I said earlier, I use the hook as a weight to slowly float the worm down and it offers a more natural presentation when I do move it. Now, if by chance I need a little additional weight for a longer cast, or if there's a little wind or a little current to compensate for that, I will add 
a little weight or if I need to go a little bit deeper. You can increase the hook size for one thing or to control sink rate and the action, go to a little bit heavier weight, like a, a, add a little heavier weight, you can go to 30 second or a 16th ounce split shot or even a slip sinker. He went, that fish went off the stump with it. Hello, I hit the stump. <laughs> Third half on a boat, Bill. That fish hit that bait and was ten feet off that stump with it before I knew it. Look at that pretty little bass. Found out too. Ta ta. Like I say, if you want to add something new to the way you fish, no matter where you live or where you fish, if bass live there, dead sticking will work for you under one condition only if you have the patience. Good luck and catch one for me. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. No, I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today.